What compels someone to play Shining Soul at Christmas time, huh? I mean, look at this thing. Are you kidding me with this? At least someone in the audience is thinking that, or close to that, because it's old and crummy. There's more to it, though, if you go digging. And not just with the sequel, some people actually remember Shining Soul 2. It was a more lively game, more characteristic, decent multiplayer back then. And that's not saying a ton for the Game Boy Advance. Legend of Zelda Four Swords, via the Link to the Past port, was incredible, but Shining Soul gave you character options, color options. That simple feature is so much. I like being blue. Okay. Shining itself is a long-standing franchise you don't hear much about these days. It's one I'd love to dig into given the time and interest, but uh, chance this thing does even okay is like a solid 2%. But it's a JRPG series laden with Western fantasy tropes. I think its distinguishing feature is centaurs. That didn't sound like a lot in my head, but you know, you don't see a lot of centaurs in games. Uh, sadly, they're unplayable here, so. The two games we're covering today are spin-offs of that series. Shining did all kinds of spin-offs. Not even. Shining as a series ranges from dungeon crawler titles to strategy games to action RPGs, and fair enough. I can understand the need to have a finger in every pie. Shining Soul's real selling point nowadays, and only for eccentrics and enthusiasts, is the Suda51 tie-in. Yeah, this is the first Grasshopper game published in the West. You know, Grasshopper, company that made No More Heroes. God, yes. Apparently Grasshopper doesn't publicly claim this game on their resume, but Goichi Suda himself confirmed his team worked on it. At least they do claim the sequel. Not that Suda directed the games. That was someone else. But there he is. Sprited in the credits. Caught red in handed. Can't sweep this one under the rug, boys. Anyway. Loading in is never easy these days. There's always the urge to record if you do this thing I'm doing. You can't escape it, and with all that dumbass setup, it's easier to just turn something on that's playable on the laptop. Thing's old, but runs better than ever. Full screen too, no squinting, and free. Two buttons and a control stick, and that's really all you need. Remember being excited for new releases? I bet you're still excited, whoever's watching this. At least a little bit. I, uh... I haven't bought a new game since Trials of Mana, which was great, and before that was Grand Blue. After I saw that game's death coming a mile away with no rollback, took the gamble, tried to defend it, got burned for probably the last time on a New Age fighter, it's so hard to care anymore. So I'm out here playing Nier Automata and MGS5 in 2021. And yeah, I'm a little sorry I missed out then, but I'm not much of a public discourse guy, so feels as good now as any time. But I miss feeling excited. Shining Soul is a bit like that, something I would have thought was so cool at 10 or 11. Just a little game about sealing the darkness away, being a pixel hero with colors I picked myself from a pool of four character classes. I mean, everyone's got their home world, right? Their comfort setting. And these quaint fantasy worlds were everything back then. FFTA, Golden Sun, the world is so incessantly dull. Man, you know it's rough when real grass is competing with squares. And while I'd be burned by this kind of game nowadays, I mean, it's free. <laughs> so here I sit, lights dim, laptop brightness high, burning my eyes and wandering. Never lost though. It's stupid, but before even completing the first stage, I've made a mistake. You can actually name your character specific things for bonus stats, apparently as a nod to the characters of Shining Force, a game which no child who played this could ever know, because the remake didn't hit store shelves until two years after this game's release, and because the original was on the Sega Genesis. I didn't even know what that was, until I was like, 17, what the heck? And we're talking like, plus 10 strength here, okay? I know you have no measure for what 10 strength is, but suffice it to say, that's much strength. And another set of impossible to know names will give you bonus items. Old games, man. What else you hiding, grasshopper? Someone will dig up your puff puff room eventually. You just wait. Now, I've actually picked one of the weaker characters, according to the speedrun site, and that's mostly due to attack range and impossibly low utility. I mean, yeah, you can choose to specialize in swords, spears, or axes, but only one of those, the spear, is really any good. Believe me, it's heartbreaking. Like, you can't spend the whole game just tapping A. Shining Soul lets you charge up power a la Secret of Mana as you invest skill points in your weapon of choice. The spear is noticeably better than the others here. You can hold and unleash this absolute barrage of attacks, some of which will actually hit. It's a huge problem in the game. Attacks are wildly inaccurate, and other weapons, this axe and the sword, get really terrible charge moves by comparison. Like, the sword will send you straight into danger, and the axe is just a big single attack. If you miss, 
Too bad, so spear it is. And your mileage may vary, right? I can't speak for the big dragon guy, but his attacks are big enough. Probably picked by most kids. There's Lupa like a human, an elf, uh, whatever. That guy's just a dragon. Oh, Ooh. In particular, the mage and archer get exponentially better as the game drags on. Turns out strong ranged attacks are really good in a slow, kiting heavy environment. When you're bored or have taken enough of a beating, you can port home with a wing. Seriously, this little encampment, the perfect shade to burn your eyes off. Weirdos, ninjas running around, I miss this stuff. There's such a push for hard realism in games these days, and it feels so joyless, unfrivolous. Truly, the world is not kind to silly little people and their tomfoolery. Game's kind of like a toothless Diablo 1. No dread, no edge, no blood, just clearing floors and going deeper. Collecting equipment and really caring that your spear has fire damage on it, or like, plus three strength. It's a simple joy. You know, I fell off loot games forever ago, between the first Borderlands, Diablo 3, and more. It started to feel like an impossible time sink, and I cared so much about optimized characters and builds. Felt like it was a scam, ran off to play fighters for a few years, but now that nobody's part of that equation, just me and completion, plus three means a lot again. If I asked you to imagine what the rest of the game looks like, You'd probably be right. A series of dungeons, some more visually interesting than others, a series of bosses, some more frustrating to fight than others, and it's just you and your one attack for like eight hours. <laughs> Games are so much more than this now, but even still, it's easy to be charmed by the simple presentation, the attention to detail in the dungeon sprite work, every new enemy that crops up late in a dungeon, even adjusting your inputs to deal with slower and faster enemies. It's almost cool. Unfortunately, the story's not much. Like, as a spin-off, my expectations are low, and to be fair, Shining is pretty fundamentally just about good versus evil. It's just... it's so barren. Doesn't do any kind of telling with its mechanics or gameplay, just that evil is overwhelming, and you alone can triumph against it. If the enemy count's got anything to say about it, the game lives up to that conceit. Very few people will ever see the credits, mostly because it's sold like sh and because there's so little to carry you on. Old games are rare experiences. There's two shots that stick out to me. The image of the campsite, no words, it's perfect, and the screen immediately following the final boss. It's a rough finale, and said boss, provided you position correctly, is a joke. Most of the bosses are, but the game isn't. It's tough. It's annoying, you know, constantly repositioning, micro-spacing, trying to stab in the right direction on an eight-point pad and AI set to get in your business, and hauling your own ass through eight dungeons to save no one in particular doesn't feel all that special. But when the dark dragon goes up in flames, you're left with the sun in the horizon, a breeze in the sea. Like, maybe there was a point to all this. Maybe there is hope. Maybe. It's not quite there. You can visualize it, but never touch it. I like that scene a lot. But just when you thought my soul was pummeled to death, I'm back! Shining Soul 2, baby! This game's amazing. Um, no, that isn't true, K-Bash. Fortnite and Halo are amazing. This is ugly pixel sh- <laughs> Lots of games make the Game Boy Advance look kick-ass. Cause it is. Zoomy ass. But Shining Soul 2 is one of the kings. It's got everything you need. Enhanced gameplay, including normal compass alignment, you know. There are all kinds of GBA games that take the square map and go, thank you, now my inputs are fu- Not Shining Soul 2. Game's crispy. Inputs, crispy. There's a whole roster of characters this time, from all the greatest hits to the coolest looking guy. Man, Dark Wizard? I'm Spartan! I went with Kevin from Trials of Mana, werewolf guy. I'm just trying to mash attacks and vibe, okay? This game with multiplayer, man. They have a priestess class with supportive skills available, diverse ranged options, diverse melee options. I would buy a GBA again just to play this with friends. Just idiating about this is giving me sads. Let's go, bro. The game features a story, which is a video game story. You see, there was an evil man called Jill... Jill Spy? What the fuck? Who heard a street preacher preaching the return of darkness to the lands, and he killed him, then went to the castle and befriended the king's best man, Centaur, named Deathheart. What the <laughs> And gave him the forbidden fruit. <laughs> but Deathheart knew better until he got a little curious, I guess, ate some fruit, and went fully evil. I can't. 
I can't. What's really impressive about 2 is the level design, at least coming off the first. Before, you'd trudge through a couple visually interesting zones, but more often it'd be the ugliest uh. shit you've ever seen repeated ad nauseum, okay? To the point of nausea for 10 floors and kill a boss and fight something like 200... 300 enemies every dungeon. It's boring. You're boring me, Shining Soul. There's still a good chunk of monsters, but the devs got a little spicy with it. Well, kooky, you know, off the goop. 100% Satsumi no Hado Omega killing intent with it. Got a little goblin fortress with palisades and buildings, all laid out contiguously. Man, any kind of believability on the GBA is a triumph. This level is beautiful. You can schmuck up the goblins during their little meeting. Well, I do love violence. You got a shimmering ice cave with thin, slippery paths. You got a forest with enemies hiding in the foliage. They're varied, they're believable, and they present different challenges to the player consistently. They even have little scripted sequences, like these mummies lifting a tombstone, and you can cut them off partway through their discussion and make them drop it, revealing a side quest item that you won't get if you go charging in. And that feature comes back with one of the forest bosses, these dwarves who pull out progressively rare items and you can ambush at the right time to get the one you think is best. It's so small, such a nothing feature, but so cool to experience. The only real issue is single player, and hey, I still had fun, but it's worth mentioning that I did two moves for the entire game, tap attack and charge attack. That's it. And that's enough for me. The gameplay is more in positioning and tactically using your minimal options as opposed to doing anything mechanically complex. And that's really no different than Again, Diablo 1 Warrior gameplay. It would just be so improved by multiplayer, having people to scream with through the thing. That's all. Well, there is a summon soul mechanic or a big AoE attack. I don't know. Doesn't happen all that much. It's strange too, skills in the first game were pretty limited. You'd basically focus on one offensive skill and some passive stat benefits, like resistance or something. But in two, you've got a couple of weapon skills, then all these passive traits, stun chance, evade chance, critical chance, mind you this varies character to character, and they could have given every character a projectile or something, you know, something to do. Give the werewolf a bear trap, anything. Any kind of additional utility, that's what's missing. But to be fair, your movement's good enough. There's an amount of enjoyment in pulling back from a group, charging a big attack, then turning around and barreling through. It's just a shame that the Dark Wizard, for example, will spend the entire playthrough charging a Dark Ball attack to speed through. Nothing clever or tricky or cool, just you and the world and your one attack that you alone, out of all the people on this planet, are exploring right now. Compelling enough for me anyway. Actually, I haven't mentioned it yet, but it's pretty easy to die in these games. I mean, yeah, I'm more of a glass cannon character, but you can just <laughs> in a blink if you're too cocky. I was popping herbs like Diablo potions, bro. Not as dramatic, still rough. Guess I should have upped my resistance by constantly taking that kind of damage. This is a real thing in game. Please do not teach this to children. Oh, dude, fire resistance. <laughs> and there's areas from the first game, if you're so inclined to visit, Side quests, bonus content, hit it away. Hey, that's the guy from the intro. Dead, well, that won't do. I'll find a way to bring you back. Oh, I forgot. He totally called me out. Hearing's just about the same. Little plus three excitement and all that, but this time you'll go poor trying to identify all your items. I really appreciate that Diablo made it easy and even free at a point. Ended up in poverty for most of the game and with substandard weapons constantly. I mean, when you get lucky, you feel it. I'll give him that. Plenty of weird items abound too. Baby paste? I'm really impressed by the bosses this time around, though maybe I'm getting old or less cynical or what, but even something as small as the boss spin slashing into a sliding tumble animation is so satisfying. I don't expect a lot from the GBA, you know, those budgets aren't gigantic, and injecting personality and realism with simple things like that really helps breathe life into the space. And they're tough, too, like there's no trouble with fighting them again, you can just warp back, but the fight resets every time. This ain't like Diablo 2, okay, no free town portals, you win or you die. Respect. And they're not impossible, they just feel hard right away while you learn how to maneuver the boss's attacks. I'd say they're just right for the intended GBA audience and make single player challenging, but viable. I'm sorry, that grab took out my whole life bar? What? I do have to point out that the dialogue is pretty strained. For example, this masterpiece. 
I'm the captain of this ship. Robert's my name. I was born on the beach not far from here. And yes, I am insane. Abnormally insane, though. For that reason, I can keep my sanity. If I had an older master, he'd definitely agree. Hey, stop it. Stop this useless quarreling. You'll make the ocean restless. But that's alright. Get covered in squid ink and you'll understand. This is presented with his static image, no weird corruption aura, anything, just raw dialogue. And I'm telling you, it's obvious, especially after the fact, that he was corrupt. But those sentences are fatio. I'm insane. Abnormally insane. Therefore, I can stay sane. What are you Whoa! talking about? But yeah, the buses are pretty cool otherwise. Eventually, if you're bad like me, you'll run into a wall where you need to grind or complete side quests, boost your stats, or at least you think you do. Speedrunners do some amazing stuff with this game. Having memorized enemy patterns and the like, they can blow through the hardest segments, damageless. Even when I came back to the endgame area, I was still getting pummeled despite my increased health. Either because my resistances weren't high enough from not being blasted enough, or I just suck and played stupid most of the time. Multiplayer, man, it always comes back to multiplayer, but what are the chances of that? Ah. These games aren't incredible, really, but they're simple pleasures. Easy to learn, easy to run, just enough spice. Sometimes all it takes is a color choice, a different weapon. Really, there is no sell. I imagine zero people will bother to try them out, even the second, which is pretty good. Because, eh, I got Halo. Whatever, that's fine. You wait. There'll be a time when you're so burned on gaming or so nostalgic that you'll take that trip back, and then it'll just be you in that fragment in time. It's not spiritual or anything, but it is meditative. Immersing in and reflecting on the things that time forgot. There was a time, in the weeks and months following July 2003, where Goichi Suda kicked a soccer ball through a credit scroll. It's the small things. Always. And then the dark gods started fronting, so I popped them like a fucking grape! Hey, it's K-Bash. Huge thanks goes out to my $4 patrons whose names are on the screen. The show's finally getting somewhere thanks to the community's generosity. And special thanks goes to my extra generous patrons who are... Adam Welsh, Alexa, Andy Blar, Arch, Basement Dweller, BZ Soul, Bohawk, Brios, Cal, Can I Cuss on Captain here? Captain Blast, Captain Wave, Caesar T, Cordon, Christo, Cody Gold, Couch Mobile, Corgi the Lad, Crater, CW Glass, Cyrus, Daddy Dago, Don Diem, Dakota Storm Jones, Jackie Stank, Swaggy, David ben, Castillo, Dara, Deco, Dead, Dylan Coffee, 8 Bit Funk, Elias, Elpio, Elsa, Aesthetico, Everstone Isle, Exa, Fupa Saiyan, Frankenstick, Glyph Seeker, Gurkori, Gucci Plant, Hatsune Miku's Crackhouse, Heeman, Game and Station, Max, you ingenious clown, I punched a sandwich, irradiated cherry, dice Kyle, it's time to sue, Ivy Ruth Langley, James, Jason Lasky, Jaden, Jay Dayas, Joke Frog, Jordan Joyner, Keegan Too Cool, Clock Crated, Crazy Dark Chocolate, Ice, Latrix, Laundry Mom, Lego Sid, Juan, Low Fat Mogul, Lucas Boyd, Lucky McSmucky, Magical Madman, Markulis, Maximilian Wolfgang Niver, MD Shulips, Mike DeVere, Mookie Moo Official, Monochrome Only, Mr. Dodongo, Night Renew, Nito Torpedo, Old Burgle, Old Man Cranberry, Barry. Only LK, The Plant, Pandemic Cowboy, Pinata, PK Gaming, Potato Gaming HD, Quasar McDougal, Quillworth, Quinn, Reasonable Willow, Reggie Rodriguez, Taja Trash, Siren Smells Good, Salty Smasher, Sam Vertigo, Sakai No Awarda, Shot, Silver Bear 909, Zoom. God! Sleepy Wabbit, Suckdolager, Space Lizard, Spooky Grimalkin, Squishward, Starbound, Sublime Cataclysm, Super Catanova, Super Sandwich Guy, The Big Bubby, The Salt Knight, Big Dick Mystic, Thrips Heartthrob, Timid the Writer, Travis Edwards, Trevingsley, Twiddle Chungus, Vid, Venom, Vice Puck, Viewers Like You, Vic, Waposa, Weed Trash, Well Shit, Where Am I Home, Winter Solstice, Zanny Tanner, Yay Kundo, Young Citrus, Zachary Livesey, Zachary V, Zanasso, Zane, the Impure, Zane the Pure, Zeratax, Zed Slayer Gamer, Zero Zalazar, Silvlin Ray, Cyberpunk. If you'd like to help support the show, unlock new long-form projects, and help me keep improving, check out my Patreon. We got all kinds of goals and lots more videos in store. Stay tuned for more. K-Bash out.